suggested that I say that he's not as old as the Statue of Liberty, that he's um, still got a lot of uh, last hurrahs to go. But anyway, uh, we're writing the book, yeah. and um, uh, perhaps three questions come to mind. One is uh, Senator Goldwater's contribution to uh, the Republican Party or the conservative movement. Uh, the second one is to the nation. And the third one would be uh, to your own political life. Well, I think he, he was the John Baptist of John the Baptist of the Republican Party and the conservative movement. My own memories go back, as you know. I come from way over on the way over on the other side, having been an ardent New Deal Democrat. And uh, but also, as I've often described it to many people, and. Uh, in the motion picture industry, I discovered that if you don't sing or dance, you become an after-dinner speaker. And some of that came out of my sports announcing days, the usual route for sports announcers at the end of the season, the football banquets and so forth, and be invited to speak. But anyway, I always did my own speeches, and then in Hollywood, as an official of the Screen Actors Guild and so forth, I, I uh, began speaking out on public affairs and without realizing that I was converting myself as I began based on things happening to people in the picture business, tax policies and so forth, that I was assailing a government's intrusiveness and so forth. And I can, my memory isn't all that clear. I wasn't used to looking at Republican conventions in 1960, but I can still remember a Barry Goldwater. There was an abortive movement on the part of uh, some Republican conservatives to uh, uh, bring forth Barry Goldwater at the time. Okay. And I can still remember seeing him standing there when he said resoundingly in that convention and from the platform, conservatives grow up and then turned them back to the direction they wanted to go. And I remember at that time then, uh, I believe that he should have been the vice presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. I'd become acquainted with him. Uh, Nancy's parents had uh, their home in Phoenix, and uh, it wasn't. It was a. They shared that between he, the God, doctor, hadn't retired yet. That in Chicago, and we would go and visit them when they were there. And many times, Barry Goldwater was a visitor, and I became personally acquainted with him. And I remember once mentioning to him the idea of his being the presidential candidate, and he acted as if I was out of my mind. But uh, his book, Conscience of Conservative, had a great deal to do with uh, my developing conservative position, which finally led me to uh, recognize that the Democratic Party had left me a long time ago. Is it a fair statement, Mr. President, to say that uh, Barry Goldwater was your a kind of political godfather. You use the expression John the Baptist. Um, uh, how would you? Well, he was he was the epitome of of this whole rising attack on the great growth and power of government and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, he spoke with great good common sense. Mm -hmm. And so when uh, being a brand new uh, Republican. Uh, some people uh, that later uh, supported me for some of, in some of my activities uh, saw that I was at least an alternate delegate to the 64 convention. And, uh, but I was all out for him, and I wound up as the co-chairman, state chairman, for the Goldwater campaign in California and was all over the state uh, speaking in his behalf. Is it fair to say, uh, Mr. President, that your speech 64 television speech, which, which created a great wave of interest in Ronald Reagan across the country, really n launched you as a national political figure? Well, evidently it had a great deal to do because when then my turn came after the 64 uh, election, which had led to great divisions in the party and all, the first people who began approaching me about the coming gubernatorial campaign in 66 Believe me, I dismissed them as Barry had dismissed me once before. I thought they were out of their minds. I always believe you pay your way. So I would, I had always, as a figure in show business, 
uh, been willing to participate in fundraisings and campaign for causes and people that I believed in, that sort of thing, because if you're in show business, you can attract an audience. And uh, I thought that I'd done my bit, and I kept over and over saying, no, no, that isn't for me. Public office isn't anything I want. I like what I'm doing. But you find a candidate, and I will go out and work for them as I did in this last campaign. And uh, that finally it didn't work, and I was dragged kicking and screaming into doing something I thought I would never do. But that particular speech, there might be something of interest to you about this, that um, I had made that speech statewide. And then one night, very, getting very close to the end of the campaign, I addressed a fundraising group at the Coconut Grove in uh, Los Angeles. And a little group at a table, some pretty prominent Democrat or Republicans, caught me on the way out and asked me if I would come over to the table, their table for a few minutes and sit down with them. They broached the idea to me that if they raised the money to pay for it, would I make that speech on television? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I'm very happy to, because it had been well received throughout the state. I'd seen it to many, given to many audiences. And so they bought the time. And then we invited a lot of Republicans. It was done at a studio, but I said, I think it'd be much better if it were done with an audience instead of like it, as if it were a regular affair rather than just me standing up making a speech. So they filled one of the studio auditorium studios there with an audience of Republicans and I made the speech. Well, about the day before the speech was to go on, I got a call from Barry and he asked me if I would relinquish that time for them to put on and repeat one of his appearances with Eisenhower uh, that they wanted his people to talk to me. He says, I, don't, I haven't seen your speech or heard it. I don't know anything uh, about it. But he said, my people tell me also that you've got a line in there about uh, Social Security. And he said, I've been, I've been trying to uh, kill that, spend a million dollars trying to kill this attack on him. You know, mm -hmm. people, just as they have against me recently, had launched the thing that he was against Social Security and so forth. Right. And I told him on the phone uh, that that had been very well received because what I was talking about uh, was uh, actually the uh, giving more uh, private control on the part of the people, the recipients of Social Security, mm -hmm. removing some of the restraints and so forth and restrictions. Well. After I told him, I, I remember I was sitting there. I didn't realize at the time I couldn't have given up that time. It wasn't mine. It had been bought by uh, mm -hmm. a group of Republicans. Mm -hmm. But I said, Barry, I, uh, I wish you'd give it a thought because I said, I, it has been well received, that speech. And I said, I, mm -hmm. I think you, you come out <laughs> very well in it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, he said, well, I'm going to get it and run it here at the hotel. Mm -hmm. Well, my brother was the Vice President of McCann Erickson, who were the, the advertising agency handling the Goldwater campaign, he was in the hotel suite. Mm -hmm. And finally, Barry's people, who'd been the ones that had been urging him to shut me off, mm -hmm. they brought it in. They, could, they couldn't see it, but they brought in a soundtrack and played the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And my brother told me later that Barry just looked around the room at his people and said, what the hell is wrong with that? Mm -hmm. And uh, he called me back and said, uh, forget the first call that it was going to go on. Well, then I started sweating blood. Who was I to tell the candidate that he should let my speech go on instead of an appearance of his own going on? And we had a date to go out to dinner, and we were going to, at that dinner in some friend's house, watch the telecast. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget that about three, had to be three o'clock in the morning here in Washington, and it was uh, just midnight out there. I was awakened with a call from one of the campaign staff in Washington to tell me that the switchboard were still open back here and that I can't remember how many millions of dollars had already, before the night was over, been pledged. Mm -hmm. And uh, my guilt feeling disappeared and I felt <laughs> very good about it. But it is true that it was that then that made a group of Republicans uh, think that I could bring the party together that was badly divided in, in California. Right. 
uh, if I were the candidate. So uh, this sounds like I'm talking more about me than... No, about but it's there. a very important part of Barry Goldwater's uh, history and, and your own history. Uh, Mr. President, if I may ask you one really important question for the book, and it's this. Um, how do you view the role of Barry Goldwater after more than 30 years on the American scene? What is his contribution to the nation? Well, I think it starts with that other, the, the very fact. He changed the direction of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, believe me, the Republican Party, when I first began coming around, I saw it as trying to imitate the Democrats. Uh, in other words, he even outspend them. They thought that that was the answer to politics, was to offer more. And uh, he stopped that, and stopped it cold. And the party started down a new, new path. And he has been a voice of reason and common sense uh, uh, ever since. And also an outstanding voice of integrity. I don't think even of the critics of Barry Goldwater and those who disagreed with him, no one ever doubted that what he said he was on any subject he was saying from the heart and meant. Uh, Mr. President, just one last question, and it's this. Is Barry Gold Barry Goldwater is a character. Barry Goldwater is known all over this country as a character. Um, the guy who really says exactly what is on his mind. Is he the last, a kind of a last of the breed in this city, in, in the Senate, and in Congress? Oh, no. No, I think there are, you can, you can now find other people that Maybe he is their inspiration, mm -hmm. but that uh, now uh, follow their own beliefs and so forth instead of trying to look for the political expediency. Mm -hmm. yes. he's, he's unique, there's no question of that. And some of the things that I talked about in that, in that speech about him that, and learned about him, that not only the things people, and particularly as critics, would look at the kind of a uh, acerbic attitude and so forth when he was speaking and hammering on points he believed in. But what about the Barry Goldwater? That at a time when our servicemen in Korea and so forth come back and wait hours at airports and couldn't get tickets on planes to get to their homes when they had to leave and so forth. Mm -hmm. And over in Phoenix, the, the airports, they would take soldiers who couldn't get on and were faced with this who knows how long a wait there were people that would then point to them to an airplane over on a runway and say, if you go over there, I think there's a fellow that would take you to your home. And it was Barry Goldwater in his plane. Mm -hmm. And he would sit there day after day and fly these servicemen where they were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in a final uh, few words, Mr. President, uh, Senator Goldwater has told me to say to you that uh, he thinks you're, you're a fine president and uh, that uh, he likes you. Well, it's very much returned, I can assure you. And you know, the, the thing that happened to him politically, when I use the term John the Baptist, uh, look what happened to him. So uh, yes, Barry took it on the chin uh, after that 64 uh, campaign, but it never changed him and it never, it never uh, slowed him in his efforts to keep on preaching the, the message that now, I, as I say, I think has become a standard republicanism. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Appreciate it a lot, sir. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you again, sir. Great. Okay. Jack, if you have problems with the... Yeah, okay. I think we can get your transcript. All right. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Whoops. Don't walk away. I don't want to walk away with this. I'll walk away with the electricity. Thank you, sir. Jack told me that they're testing the new T-46 trainer yeah. plane. Yeah. <laughs> he was on the yesterday. Yeah. He's the phone last Saturday, then. Oh, he said the, the, oh, yeah, the, the yeah. 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 SR-7. Yeah. 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 yeah, I asked him why he was going up in the 46. He said, I want to find out if we're getting our money for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think we are. We, we, uh, I would have heard from him if he didn't think so. I just, and who was it? Who was the original? This thing that the, the opponents jumped on him about at the convention in 64? Uh, extremism and uh, extremism. Uh, yeah. Moderation. Yes, yeah. but that was a quote. And who was it? Cicero. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what the hell was wrong with that statement? 
Um, ben Bradley, I talked to him the other day, he said if Jack Kennedy had said the same thing, it would have been ignored. And would have said, hey, what a line. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ben yeah. Bradley admitted that on this tape recorder. Yeah. They yeah. did do a job on Bowling around 64 there, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Oof. You see, the opponents have the, you know, the difference between that and the image that they would create of someone else was uh, they didn't want to admit that uh, he might know what a Cicero said. He was not supposed to be an intellectual. <laughs> well, he took Latin at Stanton, the military <laughs> academy, four years of Latin. Not, not many people know that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he, his Latin is not too bad. He started studying at Stanton. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you very much, Mr. President. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.